Okay, so as I'm just doing my final cutouts, I can also decide um, which elements might be better suited to other places. And I'm thinking I want to move this one up here and move that one back here. <laughs> and so that will just take a little bit of adjustment. Let's turn off the body for a second. Turn off the head and get this foot to the right proportion. And maybe flip it horizontal. So before you seam things together, make sure they're where you want them to be. Now I liked how the lighting was working on it. That's why I put it at the back, but the shape of it and the softness of it wasn't working as well as I would like. So I'm gonna warp it, kind of tilt it back, and then I'm just gonna really quickly play with its overall levels and darken its midtones, deaden its highlights, and then big color balance issue. Get away from that strong yellow, especially in the highlight. There we go. Maybe cool its shadows. Maybe not. I can also just do a, instead of using the sponge tool to desaturate it, I can also just use hue, hue saturation to desaturate it all a little bit. And even to just darken it all a little bit. So it sits in the background more. That leaves me with this one. And this is the one I still have to cut out. And again, I'm going to create my own edge. This is where a mouse is not a great tool. So using that tablet and stylus, even if it's a fairly inexpensive stylus and tablet, is going to give you a much better end product. All right, then once we've got these things cut out, then we get to move on to the transitions between the elements. So the last one to cut out over here. Let's cut the leg out. Cut this bottom transition out. I know I don't need a lot at the top because it's being overlapped by the body. And then I missed a little bit. I have it feathered at two pixels, so that helps to soften it. A little bit better job on that. Okay. So now I get to do that dodging and burning stuff, but I might as well turn on all the assets. And now I have my move tool set to layer select. So I can just go to immediately to a layer. Oh, what's going on here? Ah, because I moved the head. I need to cut this one out. So once I've selected that layer, I can do the cutouts that I need without any issue. Okay. Yeah, you're not even seeing anything of that back mushroom, but it's nice to have it there just in case. So first and foremost, let me play with this one. So I hold down command, it'll go to the move tool, it will select the layer I want. I'm just going to go right to dodging and burning and desaturating. 
using the sponge tool. Taking a little of that intense color out before I burn in shadows in the midtones along the bottom. And actually burning the highlights is going to be even more effective for putting this kind of in a cast shadow. To show that it's under the body. Then I can do the same thing here. Kind of show the inside of the body. Uh, I'm overdoing that though. So let's take it down to a lower exposure. It builds up fast, especially on really kind of delicate, delicately valued assets like these white mushrooms. So burn both the shadow of this kind of shell and the edges. Oops, careful not to move it. But also the inside. And I can just move that burn tool onto a lot of different surfaces to help with the lighting. Frame around the eye here, knocking down the highlights. Yeah, that color is way too strong. I'm going to select that layer and just go right to hue saturation and knock that saturation back. And then I also want to transition it with a soft eraser. And bite away from this. Transition it into the shape. And then I might want to play with warping it a little. Yeah, there we go. So that feels more believable. And then I can go back into burning this time the midtones. Too strong, too strong. And that shortcut of holding down command to get to the move tool and having the, the move tool on auto select layer will save you a lot of time. Good kind of pro tip there. Now, what we're trying to do is design our creature in default settings. So kind of what it would look like in very uh, nondescript lighting, kind of diffused lighting where we're seeing all the textures. But this is generally lit a little bit from above, right? There's no light coming from the bottom. So I need to be careful of any lighting that seems too strong in any one place. And the bottom of the feet are not going to have a lot of light. Even though as mushrooms they did. But with each, with each time I am uh, playing with dodging and burning, I'm making some pretty strong decisions about what colors are going to remain and what aren't. Let's see. See, I like it there. 
so in order to bring out kind of the the waist i'm kind of burning the shadows and the shapes so it feels like it's dented in between the legs here and then of course behind the head because the head casts a shadow and then on the tail as well And I can do the same thing with dodging that I do with burning. I can lighten. Now that I have a sense of my creature and the color is involved, I can dodge and burn with a little bit more confidence. And that's what we want from our creatures, you know, confidence. We feel solid. We know where we're supposed to look. And then remember, dodging and burning can increase or decrease saturation, so you can use the sponge tool to make up for that. All right. Good. So the only thing I didn't really work on was this transition, so let me do that really quickly. Even though it's almost completely hidden, that might come in handy later. And I'm just going to dodge and burn this a little, so it feels like it, it works. And maybe warp it just a tiny bit at the base here. Okay, so I can work with this. So good time to save, turn on all my assets, turn off or delete any smart layers I'm not using, save memory. I'm about 500 megabytes right now. Remember I've cropped down. Now I can crop down even further, closer to my original sketch proportions, to around 11 by 14, thinking about how I would want it to be framed within a mat. So if this is the black mat, what's a good arrangement of my creature in my portfolio. That will save memory. Oops, still on the crop tool, get off the crop tool. And then, let's see. I'm gonna burn the highlights here, just a little bit more behind. On the inside. Okay, now finishing tips. Beyond what we've been doing. We're trying to kind of work the whole thing. Dodging and burning so that it all works together. But there's going to be some transitions that aren't as strong as others. And I have a prime example for you. I don't think from here to here is particularly strong, right? It just seems kind of arbitrary. And then especially from here to here it just looks really artificial and not too clean. So what are some ways we can work with that? Well, let's close all of our groups and make a brand new layer at the top of everything. In fact, I'm going to lock all of these groups because they've done their job. But I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything that I'm going to call my clone stamp layer. And I like to clone stamp not within a layer that already has pixels, but on its own layer because otherwise you, you end up destroying pixels as much as you end up creating them. So on a new clone stamp layer, we're gonna use this new tool called the clone stamp tool. And on top, using that, I can do little internal compositing to soften edges. So I'm gonna pick a nice soft brush at 100% opacity, and then I hold down Option to target, and then I can paint it 